Welcome to the Bio Balance HealthCast, episode number 528. Blueberries are good and statins are bad for adult onset diabetes. BioBalance Health features conversations about anti-aging medicine. Your hosts are Dr. Kathy Moffin, Medical Director of BioBalance Health and a leading expert in treating symptoms of aging, and Brett Newcomb, a licensed professional counselor. Dr. Moffin and Brett are the authors of The Secret Female Hormone, the seminal work about testosterone replacement therapy for women, and Got Testosterone, the newly released book for men, that helps men choose the most effective and safe form of T replacement. These books are available on Amazon or from Dr. Moffin's office at BioBalance Health in St. Louis and in Kansas City. Dr. Moffin's office is currently accepting new patients. We are in the midst of what's considered to be an epidemic in the United States, and it's not coronavirus, I mean, with that also, but we have an epidemic of obesity, that leads to diabetes. And the older you get and the fatter you get, the more likely you are to develop adult onset diabetes. Mm -hmm. This week we're gonna talk about some studies that provide new information, new treatment strategies, and new hope for adults that have become diabetic or who are wanting to avoid becoming diabetic. So we'll talk about those things today. Let's start with talking about blueberries. Blueberries. So some studies have come out that said, Blueberries have more value than just fruit that you get when fruit. it's in season. <laughs> so a study at the VA hospital in Virginia, the, the Stratton Veteran Affairs um, mm -hmm. Medical Center, uh, says VA, so that's the VA, but not Virginia. It's in Albany. In New Albany, York. New York, yeah. They revealed that just one cup of blueberries every day for three months decreased the risk of of heart disease and improve the control of diabetes in diabetic men. Now, they didn't test women. I assume it's going to be the same for women. There's not that big a difference in terms of food affecting uh, that particular disease. You know, okay. men and women seem to react uh, Similarly same, but they diabetic. just looked at the VA, pa the men in the VA patients. So, sure. So they found that these men had lower triglycerides when it was over. And triglycerides is one of the things that we look at for, for predicting heart disease and stroke in men and also worsening diabetes. So triglycerides go up when your diabetes is getting worse and, and when you're at risk for having a cardiovascular event. I'm not talking about arrhythmia. I'm talking about uh, atherosclerosis, the kind of thing where you have cholesterol plaque on the inside of your blood vessels. So that can cause stroke as well. So they found that um, taking the blueberries mm -hmm. actually lowered the triglycerides, lowered the um, morbidity and mortality of these patients. So they, they had an ongoing study with that longer than And that's by months. itself, without other medicines or other interventions. That was the only change. Just And that changed the triglycerides, mm -hmm. which then reduced the consideration of the risk for stroke and heart attack. Mm -hmm. And diabetes. And diabetes. And, and improve the diabetes. Yeah. Huh. Which is m amazing. And so we should all go run out and get blueberries. <laughs> I mean, even people, 50% of the population has diabetes. Yeah. Or prediabetes. And basically, we're all at risk for that. So if we have it genetically, we're more at risk and may not even have to be obese to get it. But blueberries seem to be the thing. And if you can get them and freeze them, you can. it was freeze, it was free, frozen. Uh, freeze dried and fresh, a cup of those, and that was it. Yeah, that's not even hard to do because it's not even doesn't even taste bad. It's it's a good tasting medicine, so it's an easy fix, mm -hmm. an easy edge on uh, to protect yourself. So, in, in the intro, you talked about statins mm -hmm. as a concern as well. How, mm -hmm. how do we segue from blueberries into statins? Well, I, I just put three studies together because they mm -hmm. all had to do with diabetes and heart disease. Okay. So normally you take a statin when some when your doctor says, oh, your total cholesterol and your LDL are high uh, and you need to lower your cholesterol. First, what I'll say about that is we need cholesterol to make testosterone and our other um, steroid hormones like estrogen. But we also need our cholesterol for our brain. We need cholesterol for our cell walls. We don't want to get our cholesterol too low with one exception. If you've already had a heart attack or you have 
uh, been measured as having a lot of plaque but not yet having a heart attack, mm -hmm. then statins are indicated. And, you know, you just have to have the risk of getting diabetes because you're taking the statins. If you haven't had any of those things, being placed on statins is going to put you at risk for diabetes for no apparent reason. I mean, just it, the statin in, just causes the statin your drug increases your risk of getting diabetes. Okay. And um, that that study came out two weeks ago. Actually, I didn't find a I didn't find the copy that I was reading. I should. I'll, you, you identified as HbA1c and triglycerides. Hemoglobin A1c. Okay, I never know what those. Hemoglobin A1c and triglycerides in men taking excuse me in men and women taking um, statins for their cholesterol actually went up. And I've seen that in my practice. People are placed on statins and then all of a sudden they've got prediabetes and then diabetes. And and the be so, so the statins may reduce the LDL and limit the cholesterol. Right. But at the same time they increase the sugars. Right. And they increase the insulin resistance. Okay. So then you get diabetes, then you're at higher risk of heart disease. So in the end, it goes full circle, and you're taking a drug that's making you worse. My answer to that is, if, you have, if you've had a heart attack, you have to take the one statin that does that the least, and that's Crestor. Crestor is the one statin that is the least likely to cause diabetes. However, it's, it's the least likely to increase your sugars? Right. Among all the different among, statins? Among all the other statins. So if you can, if you have to take a, a, a statin, statin, ask your doctor if you can take Crestor. Right. Because then that helps protect you against diabetes. Well, it just it just doesn't increase your risk. It doesn't, it doesn't really protect your risk. you. It just doesn't increase. And the that's risk. an important distinction. And that's very important. So the other thing that you can do is there's a drug called Zetia. It is a different kind of cholesterol lowering drug. It is not a statin. It doesn't have the side effects of causing you to ache all over or have your muscles dissolve. You know the difference. Statin side effects, side effects statins, right. statin headaches, statin um, Alzheimer's. I mean, it doesn't cause statin dementia is what it's called. Sorry. Uh -huh. um, so it doesn't cause those types of side effects. It just gets rid of your cholesterol and drops your cholesterol numbers. So to me, that's the best answer. And it works like statins without the side effects. But it's the only drug of its kind. So Zetia is, you know, there'll be a run on Zetia next. So. Right. So you're saying if you're if I'm on a statin, Try to make it be Crestor. Right. If I'm on that. And you uh, have side effects like and muscle I, pain and, and you can't think and, and you, you feel then see bad, if I can then switch try to, to Zetia. Go to Zetia. And then in addition, you say, talk to your doctor about whether or not normalizing your hormones and your triglycerides can help you not take statins, right. not have the concern about mm -hmm. your cholesterol. But you have to find a doctor that's willing to do that. Is that a controversial or unusual treatment approach? Yeah, it is. It's very controversial. It's not controversial, but it's unusual. Most doctors just don't have much time with you, and so they say, here, take this, and then they leave the room. It's a standard of care? It's standard. Of, well, FDA has only approved statins for people who have had heart disease. So if and you've then, already had a heart if you've attack. you've already had a heart attack, then they approved it for those folks. Right. They didn't, they didn't approve it for everybody. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I've heard a doctor say, let's just put it in the water. Well, you know, then you're going to kill some people. <laughs> I mean, that's, that's, that's a silly statement, but an educated person made it. Yeah. Or several Because it seems people. that so many people need statins. Right. But cholesterol issues. Honestly, all it does is lower your cholesterol. That doesn't necessarily make you have fewer heart attacks. Lowering it's really about inflammation and not just, not just cholesterol. So... Yeah. To lower your risk of heart attack, you have to lower your inflammation, and that's a whole different thing. Statins don't necessarily. So take care essentially, of that. are those doctors saying, uh, "Okay, would you rather die from a heart attack or would you rather die from diabetes? You know, which is a worse mm -hmm. death? Because you got to make a choice, right? Or you may need to make a choice. If you've had a heart attack, you're likely to have another one. Yes. So because you're already damaged. Those people, I would say statins, and then I, you know, I'd say Crestor. Yeah. But the other people who have not had a heart attack mm -hmm. and try to get on the, the least likely to, to cause your sugars and triglycerides to go up and, or get on Zetia. Okay. And the, um, the, it's a big deal to get diabetes. I watched people 
have Develop their sugars it. go up and mm-hmm. go up and go up because they're on this. I, I say, go to your doctor, ask them if you can go on Zetia. Their doctors, of course, are confident in their own knowledge right. and aren't, I, I'm 10 years ahead. This is 10 years ahead. Mm-hmm. This is, this is research that's not going to come into the standard of care for 10, 15 more years. But you're living now and you need to be treated now and you need to have the best treatment that you can. You certainly don't want to get sicker because you're taking a statin. Right. And I mean, I have, a, I have a couple patients that come to me for testosterone because they were on a statin. All their muscle mass went away. It, it caused pain and, and all their muscles just dissolved. And they, I gave them testosterone to help maintain their muscles. But that, they were off the statins, but that process kept happening. Right. Testosterone slowed it a little bit, but they still, they don't have any muscle mass now. It's miserable. They can't get around. Yeah. So if you have a, if you have a, if you're on a statin and you have the muscle pain, that's a genetic thing. You can't take statins. You have to be off of a statin. You have to be on Zetia or on nothing or on diet and exercise. But testosterone <laughs> lowers your cholesterol. So before I ever even think about having somebody talk to their doctor about their lipids, I, I give them their testosterone and watch their LDL come down. So it lowers your cholesterol without being a statin. Without being a statin. And it also then helps you build muscle mass. Right. So that's a win-win. I mean, win. to me, it's an easier answer. Yeah. If somebody still has genetically high cholesterol, <clears throat> then Zetia, and I've had people go on Zetia and watch their blood sugars come back down to normal. Mm-hmm. which is amazing because no one really talks about this. This is like a new study. Oh, a new thought. But I've watched this for years. Right. And no, this I've is, heard you complain about statins and statin use for years, literally. Yeah, four years. Because, I mean, to me, if I had to take a statin, I'd, I would take Zetia. I wouldn't yeah. take that. Yeah. I wouldn't take any of the statins. Even Crestor. There. Right. So, um, so testosterone pellet therapy. In pellets, not necessarily orally or, or creams or gels, but... In the form of, of uh, pellets, testosterone lowers cholesterol. So combination of those two conversations leads to a third piece of research that you've found that talks about uh, trying to, if you have diabetes, trying to prevent heart damage and heart failure. Right. And there are some new medical strategies, new medicines or, mm-hmm. or intervention strategies that help with that. Right. There, I mean, there's um, in the Journal of... Um, endocrinology they have endocrinology news which is like the newest stuff Mm -hmm. newest research and uh there are drugs called sglt2 inhibitors Mm -hmm. those are called they're also called invocana and farsiga if you've heard of those they are drugs for diabetes that actually dump sugar through your kidneys they don't hurt the kidneys as they do that, they improve the kidney function, actually, mm-hmm. when they do that. But they, they don't dump sugar the, the way that the other medications do. They also help you lose weight. So as far as I can tell, the only drawback to these drugs is that they can cause yeast infections in women. Well, you know, I'd rather... <laughs> I don't want a yeast Which, infection, but we right. can we can we can deal with that in a different way, mm-hmm. probiotics and some other things. So to me, th- this is a new drug and new use for a drug. But the best part about it is that most drugs for diabetes may decrease your risk of heart disease somewhat just by improving your sugars. Mm-hmm. But this drug lowers your morbidity and mortality, your death and your sickness, secondary to to heart disease. So they may, it may even work in non-diabetics to decrease your risk from heart disease, of getting heart disease, or dying from heart disease, and kidney disease. It's, it, they aren't exactly sure if they're going to use it in non-diabetics or not. But they're They're experimenting with it now, with or that. testing. Yeah, they're yeah. testing it. But for diabetics who have the signs of heart disease, or the beginnings of heart disease, or even have had a heart attack, this would be the drug to be on. You know, we usually start diabetics first on metformin to improve their, their insulin resistance. And then, we, and then we may go to Victoza, which also works with insulin resistance but decreases hunger and, and um, helps you actually feel full so that you, you don't overeat. But this is the next 
generation. So they're now suggesting anybody with any kind of kidney disease, any kind of, of heart, heart disease or risk, that they should be on one of these SGLT2 inhibitors. Mm -hmm. So Invokana or Farsiga. So this is now in their protocols. So metformin first, then either this or Victoza. So, so to me, that sounds like a really good new piece of information that we can use to prevent disease because that's what I'm all about. I'm all mm -hmm. about not getting a disease. Try, I mean, fixing it if you've got it but, and trying to reverse it. Right. But also just prevent what you see down the road because I, I have that issue with my brain. My brain sees too far down the road. I can see somebody come in and they have a certain number of things and I can see that in five years they're going to have a heart attack or they're going to, they're, they'll have a stroke or they'll have something worse. <laughs> well, in, in your book, The Secret Female Hormone, you mm -hmm. talk about the aging cascade, the mm -hmm. illnesses that start to develop and accumulate mm -hmm. and, and overflow as we age. Mm -hmm. And something's going to kill you. But there are mm -hmm. some bigger ones, more at-risk ones, like heart disease and diabetes mm -hmm. and obesity. Mm -hmm. If you have those issues, that cascade is pretty overwhelming. So my, my These strategy is the first thing is yeah. to give people their hormones back right. when they lose them. And then use the proper drug with the few, fewest side effects to actually try to prevent all of these things. I mean, yes. testosterone does some of it, but we also have to, you have to do your, your job of, of changing your lifestyle and I have to do my job of giving you the proper drugs. Well, in the book, The Secret Female Hormone, that's what you say, the first domino that falls is the testosterone balance, mm -hmm. it goes away. Mm -hmm. And then all these others start crowding in and pretty much overwhelm the system. If you can restore the testosterone balance, that gives you the breathing room and the opportunity mm -hmm. to use these other medicines and strategies like mm -hmm. diet and exercise, healthier living, mm -hmm. give up smoking. Blueberries. Yeah, eat blueberries every day. <laughs> all of those things can work magically to help keep you healthy and have a longer life where you are capable and competent and mobile and strong. So please look into some of these strategies for avoiding the issues of aging. Stay healthy. Thank you. Email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com. You can find the Biobalance HealthCast on iTunes and on YouTube. For more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit biobalancehealth.com or call 314-993-0963. You can find Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin and on Facebook at facebook.com slash biobalancehealth. Find Brett Newcomb at brettnewcomb.com.